Hello friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Julie Fesh and today I'm going to be talking about Gummy Shower, which is the combination of having both Gummy Star and Star Shower. It is currently the white meta I'm pretty sure and what's super convenient about it is that you don't have to use stingers, so no stinger priming involved. That was honestly like the main reason I wanted to do it because I was red at first and I was really tired of farming stingers and I wanted to go white but it also had stingers so I was like let's just try gummy shower and then I ended up going gummy shower but like right before it became meta. Um, I'm not the one who made it meta someone else like found out how to use it right but it was kind of cool to like have it like right before so that was kind of cool. Anyway um, a lot of people are wondering how this works and like just a guide on like a hive build and how we're able to convert during boosts because as many people know like the reason you have star saw is to convert and all star shower is going to do is just to make you collect more so like how is that helpful completely valid question and today i'm going to answer that this is exactly the kind of thing that would normally be in Beast Swarm 101. However, I'm gonna wait until all the new like sprinklers and bags and stuff come out first to make one on that because I'm pretty sure that it's gonna completely shift around everything. So just consider this like a temporary answer. So first and foremost, I just wanna make this clear. Like, and this applies for like any hive build guide video. I highly strongly suggest that you don't take it B for B literally copy paste because you probably won't make as much because the thing is we all have different amulets and these amulets make a huge difference like more than you would probably think so you always want to try to find a build that suits your amulets so maybe get kind of close and experiment and take everything that i'm saying with a grain of salt like use it as sure like a guide but don't use it as like something to completely copy now if you do want to copy it that's fine i'm not like saying don't copy me but i'm just saying like be warned and be like at least be knowledgeable that my hive will probably not be like the best hive that you can have so yeah but it is going to give like a general idea of what to do with gummy shower and i'm going to go through each bee and explain like why i have it and stuff like that for example, like I have Diamond Bee because it has Convert Rate as a Hive bonus, and I only have it because I don't have Convert Rate on my Supreme Star Amulet, but if you do have Convert Rate on yours, you might not need Diamond Bee. So all things to consider, and just, yeah. <laughs> so let's get right into it. So first of all, we Basic Bee, any Hive needs this, and then um, Bomber Bee, Brave Bee, you don't need, don't need um, Bumble or cool. Sorry, it's like not letting me scroll down. Okay, haste to be. I personally have it because it's just helpful. Um, because star shower just helps collect stars faster. Um, it's just more helpful than brave and stuff. And if you didn't know, each colorless B type you have helps you collect more honey from the honey tokens from Gummy Star. So keep that in mind. And that's like a big reason why I have some of these bees that you might not expect. So. Yeah, Haste to Bee is good. Looker Bee, I actually don't have, which I know is kind of strange. And the reason for that is because you can actually kind of make up for it with the Battle Badge Grandmaster. It, it's not quite as big of a change. Sorry, this is really messing me up. <laughs> it's so laggy for some reason. Um, If it could let me open it. So yeah, having um, Grandmaster Battle Badge will actually be more beneficial than a Looker Bee. It's still helpful to have, don't get me wrong, and it might even be better than Haste to be. I'm not sure, but I just don't have it because eventually I'm going to get Battle Grandmaster and this kind of gummy shower, like your hive is going to be super tight and I'll get more into that later and it'll make more sense later, but just know like you're going to have to, you're probably going to run out of hive slots. So next up, Stubborn Bee. Very helpful bee, it makes marks, it has a good hive bonus, just a good bee to have. So, yeah, uh, don't need any of these, blue bees obviously. You really don't need any colored bee except for tadpoles and um, the colored mythics basically, <laughs> but we'll get into that. Um, commander bee, um, very good, uh, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. <laughs> like whatever I do I have to wait like three seconds for it to respond, okay. Commander B. It gives critical chance. Critical chance is really good and it helps with the super crit, which as you can see we have precise bees, so that's applicable here. So definitely a very good bee to have. Oh my 
gosh. Like half of the video is gonna be like me trying to navigate this right now. I don't know why it's so laggy, but the game is fine. It's just like the UI now. Okay, I'll get back to you guys when this exits south of Commander B. Okay, I've got out of Commander B. That was taking a while. So Exhaustion B is really good because it has the white field capacity, which is just helpful. <laughs> I mean, you'll see in a bit, but capacity is like a big part of this setup because we don't have stingers, and so we are going to be using microconverters. So having more capacity means each microconverter is basically worth more and more effective. So definitely you want as much capacity as possible. Honeybee is a very good bee. I mean, honey from tokens is just awesome because Gummy Star heavily relies on honey tokens. So yeah, you're gonna get way more with boosts from Honeybee. Some people don't run Honeybee unless they're boosting, which is absolutely fine and understandable. I'm just too lazy to always switch around my hives, so I just keep it all the time, but it's up to you. Next up is Shocked Bee. Um, very good bee to have for the white pollen. I mean, we are white hives, so it just makes sense to have it. <laughs> and now we get into Restricted Hive Zone. So I only have three sources of baby love right now. I have one baby bee and two tadpole bees. It is recommended that you have four because generally having four means you really won't ever run out of baby love. I mean, you will occasionally, but it's not gonna be like a common occurrence to run out of baby love. With three though, like you're not gonna have baby love all the time. And that's something that you should just accept if you're gonna have three. That's something that I accept because I realized that this setup is all around everything lining up perfectly because Star Shower is all about, it only activates every so often, but when it does activate, it's like a short period of a lot of pollen. So getting that to stack on top of things is just what you gotta hope for. And I figure I might as well just um, get even more chancy and just hope that if it all does line up, that I got the baby love because with this setup, like, you're gonna be super tight on hive slots, like I've said, like, three times already, and I apologize, so, yeah. <laughs> um, if you are gonna have more sources of baby love, I recommend only having one baby bee and the rest tadpole bees, because tadpole bees actually make blue boost tokens, and boost tokens will help spawn star shower more often, so, yeah. Next up, carpenter bee. Again, very good bee to have. It makes honey marks, which are good, and I'll get into why in a bit, but definitely a good bee to have. Um, they actually do make marks more often than Vector Bee does, so something to keep in mind there. Um, next up, Diamond Bee. Like I said earlier, I have it for convert rate, and I'll get in more into why I need convert rate in just a bit, so yeah. And then we have Music Bee. Um, I'm not sure, like I forgot, but I'm pretty sure people recommend having four sources of melody. But, I mean, with the new bee kits coming out soon that are probably going to give Melody, like, Kazoo and stuff, um, I'm not too worried about it. And like I said with Baby Bee, if it all does line up, I'm just going to hope that I have Melody activated. So, yeah. <laughs> Buoyant Bee is one that I do have. I'm, I don't think that every gummy shower uses this. Um, maybe it's controversial. I really don't know. But like I said earlier, capacity is very helpful for gummy shower. You are going to really want capacity because, um, like I said, um, your instant converters are going to be more effective, so yeah. And on top of the gift hive bonus, um, you're also going to get the balloon blessing, which stacks with it and on, on top of all the other capacity buffs, so definitely very helpful to have. Also, um, the surprise party ability spawns marks, which I know it's not like a huge thing and it doesn't even happen often, but it is something to keep in mind about it. And another thing is that Surprise Party also is the only source other than Windy Bee to have white boost tokens. So when you are going to boost, it's recommended to have some hives that have Buoyant Bee gifted so that you could get more of a high white boost stack because without it, like you're not going to get very high, maybe like three at most if you're lucky. but. You're not going to get crazy like times 10 white boost unless you have a lot of people with gifted buoyant bees. So yeah. Next up, fuzzy bee. It's helpful just for general like questing and casual grinding. But like I said earlier, every color this gifted bee type contributes to gummy shower. So it's just nice to have. So yeah. 
Okay, and now we're going to get into what I'm assuming people are probably confused about, but it's really just what allows this setup to work, and that is the precise bees and spicy bees. So how it works is basically, you kind of just leech off of what should be reds, but now it's whites. Um, hopefully it doesn't get nerfed, because that would suck, and we wouldn't have anything to do, but yes. <laughs> so basically, uh, we use spicy bees so that they spawn flames, and with that flames, we build up our flame heat. That's like literally their only purpose. And well, I guess also it's just nice to have rage. It's like the only source of rage in this hive. And with three spicy bees, you can actually maintain rage. I know that's not related to boosts at all, but it is just convenient to have. So yeah. But the reason we need flame heat is for precise bee because, um, sorry. They just really slow UI. I think it's happening because I'm recording. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'll get back to you guys when it- oh wait. <laughs> okay, here it is. So if you're shot with not a target, it actually converts um, pollen from your bag. And that's what allows this whole setup to work. So um, it's 50% of your convertible plus t um, 10 times this beast convert amount. So having convert mutations on your precise bees actually is very helpful. But on top of that, it also scales up to 10 times with your flame heat. So it does consume it, but it also makes it 10 times more effective. So you need the spicy bees to build it up, and then precise bees to make their conversions more effective. Um, you also just need precise bees to spawn precise marks for you, which help you build up Gummy Baller. And I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but Gummy Baller is like crucial for this build, at least for boosting, because... Um, Otherwise, if you don't have it and you don't know how to use it properly, you are going to run out of micro converters very quickly. Um, <laughs> my first boost, I even had it and I did not know how to use it right. It was definitely a fiasco and my boost lasted like 10 minutes and it was really bad and embarrassing. So um, yeah, I'll probably make a video eventually on like how to properly use Gummy Baller, but this is just a general rundown of the high for Gummy Shower, so yeah. But yeah, this is how it works. Um, it's not gonna completely work all the time. And like I said, we still use mech converters, but it definitely does help limit how many you use and allows you to have a full length boost. So yeah, I'll get back to you guys when it exits out of this precise B thing. <laughs> okay, it exited out, so I'm gonna continue. But before I move on, I'm just gonna say, I think people recommend having more than three spicy bees, like four, but my hive is so filled to the brim that I had to remove one. So if you can, maybe get four, um, but I couldn't get any more, so yeah. <laughs> and then back to the baby love. Again, I only have three. It's recommended to have four, but you are going to make sacrifices when you make this hive. So yeah. And then vector bee. Um, definitely your main source of pollen collecting with white in general, so you want as many as you probably can. Um, I wouldn't have any less than 14 and not any more than 16, but that's just a rough estimate. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to mention, but I said with um, Carpenter Bee that its honey marks were useful, and the reason that is is because it um, gives convert rate, which helps your precise me conversions convert up to like I think 2.25 times more and it also if you get a vector B triangulate to get inside of a honey mark then it's 50% instantly converted so honey marks are definitely important try to always have times three in the field if you can so yeah anyway moving on to event bees you want bear bee obviously I mean yeah and then I'm trying to scroll down but it's not scrolling down okay um Okay, festive B. Um, I mean, it's just very good for boosts. I mean, 100% instant conversion is very helpful. So, yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer to have it in my opinion, at least. Gummy B. I mean, definitely. I mean, you're literally white. Like, you have goo-related stuff, and honey per pollen is a good thing. So, you want gummy B. <laughs> um, Photon B. I have it for the instant conversion because it's a very valuable stat for this setup. Puppy bee, I don't think really anyone else has it. I mean, I'm not sure. Like, this like whole video is from a meta that was like three months ago. I'm sure it's changed a lot. So, like I said earlier, take it all with a grain of salt. But I have it because, like I said, capacity is very helpful. And the reindeer antlers help um, boost it by times 1.1. So, um, yeah. <laughs> 
Tabby Bee is very good. I mean, it collects a lot. And so, yeah, you don't need Vicious. And then Windy Bee is also a no-brainer. It is the only source other than Boya Bee of white boost tokens. So it's very important. So those were all the bees. And now I'm going to run through the amulets really quick um, and give my thoughts on it. So, yeah. First of all, you want a Supreme Shell amulet with goo conversion and white pollen. Those are your ideal stats, but if you have to pick one or the other, then go with goo conversion because it is very helpful. It's basically instant conversion, but it relies on your goo. Okay, that's very confusing. So let me try to make a hypothetical scenario. Okay, so say that you collect 100 pollen and with that 100 pollen, you collect 50 goo. And let's also assume that you have like 10% in goo conversion. So that would mean that 10% of that goo conversion is that 10% of that 50 goo that you collected. So 10% of that 50 goo is 5. So basically that 5 number is subtracted from your original amount of pollen. So collecting 100 pollen with 50 goo with 10% goo conversion, you're really collecting 95 pollen. And that's without any instant conversion or anything. So. Hopefully that gives a really rough idea of how goo conversion works. I can probably, I'll probably just make a video of Beastarm 101 that explains goo conversion better because that was <laughs> probably very confusing. It took me a while to understand how it works, but that's also why we need Gummy Baller because it brings goo up to times 11 and with times 11 goo that also basically makes your goo conversion 11 times more effective. So with enough goo, like you are like basically going to get like 100% instant conversion through your goo conversion. So that's kind of how it works. I know it's kind of confusing, but that's why we need Gummy Baller, and that's why it's so important to know how to use Gummy Baller correctly so you can get high enough goo stacks because um, we really do rely on goo conversion a lot. So definitely important to have goo conversion. The fields don't really matter. I guess try to get white fields, but I don't think any stand out. I think there might be a spider field pollen on the shell amulets, but um, aim for the first three stats before you get into specific fields, because, yeah. Um, ant amulet, you are going to want critical power, pollen, and critical chance, um, and then white pollen, and then either blue or red, it really doesn't matter, so, yeah. <laughs> Moon amulet, you're gonna want white pollen and instant conversion. Stick bug amulet, you're gonna want um, convert rate, bee attack, red bee attack, white pollen, and honey from tokens. This is like the ideal stick bug amulet. So this is ideal, but the most important stats are convert rate, white pollen, and honey from token. Don't get caught up between those middle two stats. You can work on them eventually, but they're not the biggest deal. And then lastly, no, not lastly. Okay, I'll just go over King Beetle. Um, you just want convert rate and B attack. The fields don't matter. None of the fields are like white, so it doesn't matter. And then lastly, Supreme Star amulet. Um, this is what I have. If you don't have this amulet, like all these stats, then I would, um, the next best thing is instead of instant conversion, having convert rate and then removing the diamond B or having diamond B. It's up to you. Just experiment. But this is definitely ideal. All of these stats having critical chance, instant conversion, B ability rate, white pollen and pollen, and then obviously gummy shower. So. Um, yeah, that's what I have, and that worked for me. I've only boosted, like, two times, so, um, this setup is not perfect, and it definitely will probably have its flaws, so that's just what I had. Hopefully this answers any questions about this, um, whole gummy shower thing. If you have any more about this, um, leave a comment down below. If you have a question not related to this, still leave it in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer, and so, yeah. I'm pretty sure that this is the setup I'm going to stick with, having like a Beastorm 101 video and then a non-Beastorm 101 video about like anything. Um, that way I won't get burnt out I feel like, and I can really just take my time, and it kind of limits myself. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's the schedule I'm going to stick with, but like I said in my um, the future of this channel video, uh, uploads will not be very constant, so expect some breaks. I'm probably gonna, not going to go like multiple month breaks again, but uh, I'm definitely not going to upload super often, so yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!